remember that one kid who was forbidden to read or watch anything about comic books or superheroes until you became an adult? You've probably never heard of Spider-Man. Since his first appearance in the 1962 issue of Amazing Fantasy No. 15, Spider-Man has rocked the scene with a number of comics, TV shows, movies, and merchandise that can make any kid happy to have. He was the combined creation of Stan Lee, you know, the guy who cameos in, in all Marvel movies, and comic book artist and writer Steve Dicko. Now, Dicko's a man you've probably never heard of. See, unlike Lee, Dicko wasn't very public with his life, as he largely declined to give interviews, saying he preferred to communicate through his work. But he did have a very interesting life, and impacting comic book legacy that I feel not many people know, and really, they should know. He was a very important man to everyone in the comic book community at large. It all started from his father's love of newspaper comic strips. Dicko found his interest in comics grew by the introduction of superhero Batman in 1940 and by Will Eisner's The Spirit, which appeared in tabloid sized comic book and in Sunday newspapers. He would eventually study under Batman artist Jerry Robinson at the Cartoonists and Illustrators School in New York City. He began his professional career in 1953, working in the same studio as Joe Simon, the co-creator of Captain America, and Jack Kirby, the co-creator of every other Marvel superhero you can think of. During the 1950s, Dicko also drew for Atlas Comics, a forerunner of Marvel Comics. He went on to contribute much significant work to Marvel, most significantly the aforementioned Spider-Man, Spider-Man supporting characters that include Gwen Stacy, and just as importantly created some of Spider-Man's most iconic villains that include the Green Goblin, Dr. Octopus, uh, the Vulture, and the supervillain team, the Sinister Six and Doctor Strange in the comic series Strange Tales. I'm Peter, by the way. Doctor Strange. Oh, you're using your made-up names. Then I am Spider-Man. In 1966, however, Dicko left Marvel. In a 2015 interview, Dicko revealed that he and Stan had arguments over plotting, and eventually they both stopped speaking to each other. Dicko would go on to find more work at the now defunct Charlton Comic. He would also go to work over at DC Comics. Dicko was also inducted into the comics industry's Jack Kirby Hall of Fame in 1990 and into the Will Eisner Award Hall of Fame in 1994. Sadly, Steve Dicko had passed away just last month, but he managed to leave behind an impactful comic book legacy that has left some of the most iconic and popular superheroes and villains that you would ever see in comic books.